we started as a human race, and look at our history after Atlantis, we started to be separate. We built borders, we built boundaries, we built passports, we built rules, we built military, we built wars, we built occupation, we built power struggle, we built destruction. We started after Atlantis to be experts in te the technology of mass destruction. Mass destruction is not Iran only has got mass destruction. Mass destruction, every nation has got technology of mass destruction. We spend 70% of our GPS, whatever GPD, but you know, of our income, like America, 70% like England used to, 70% of the income that you pay taxes to, to have military, to have forces, to occupy, to kill, to shoot, to bomb, and to destroy. Instead, that, that money, that technology can be used to heal, to have health, to have uh, all the things that we need to do. And the example is there. And it's not that far away. Yeah. So there is a new way, you here, that you are here, you are going, we are, we are, not you, we are part of this change. When we start changing, Greg Braden says, the most powerful tool that we have got in our hands, and it doesn't cost anything, it doesn't cost any university level, it doesn't cost any, blah, blah, blah. the most powerful tool that we have got is the capacity to change our thinking. Once we change our thinking, we change reality. Our thoughts precedes creation, reality. So what we think, we create. This is not only the different possibility. This is the reality. This is the secret. This is how we create this. If you connect your thought to your heart, so you have got Lemuria and Atlantis, these two didn't make it because they split, they separate those two. If we connect again heart with our mind, we create whatever we want. If we concentrate on the negative or what we say, what we say it's create. So it's important to understand to be careful what you say, because what you say, if it comes from your heart and mind, you create it. If you say, I want peace, that's what you create. If you have got 55 million, how many millions, and think the same thing, whatever politicians want and think, it will not happen, because this is the power of our thoughts. Marvelous, too, subtle, and powerful. And what do you think, Francis, as an individual or as a couple, man and wife? <laughs> every person, every person is a masculine and feminine. So I have got a masculine appearance, but I have got feminine energies. So. How do couples how do couples need to come together? They come together by being whole as individual, which means that you are balanced as masculine and feminine. That you can be masculine but you also feel compassion, <coughs> tender, expressive. Once I am whole, I can meet my mirror over the other side. If I am not holding my masculine and feminine, I will meet somebody, but we are never going to be whole. Eventually, we have to split, because if we, we cannot operate, because we have to come as whole together. That's another talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have enough days. <laughs> <laughs> after the fall of the so what we do after Atlantis, we forgot. Nobody told us the story as it was. Everybody kept a secret. Everybody had their own knowledge.
to give us what they wanted to give us. And we, we were part of it because we gave our power to our parents, our teachers, our politicians. Look at Mota, we put them on a pedestal. That's it. They are civil servants. They are serving us, nothing else. Politicians, we gave our power to the churches, we gave our power to the popes, we gave our power yes. to whatever, you know. We gave our power. It's time, you come to the whole, it's time that you take back that power and you create. You tell them what you want. And if that it's not any more important, what politicians say, what the church says, what, what the education says, we throw it out. It's time to check it out. Because we want to build something different. Ah, sorry. This is not a uh, go uh, previous. Go previous. Okay. No. Well, okay. Uh, what to, this now, these are the two stages. Now we are ready for the third stage. Okay? Humanity went into dark ages. Long dark ages after Atlantis, <coughs> Egyptians, Minoan culture, the Roman culture, and it was ready for the third stage. But it was a long period of forgetting and a long period of darkness. Go and read our history during that period from <coughs> the fall of Atlantis until <coughs> recently. Second World War, First World War, Napoleon Wars, you know, everything in history is war. Marvelous. We, we see the rise of the Egyptian civilization, and then we come to the Christian era, the setting for the third stage. Now, this is something different, okay? The Council of Andromeda, we are... The Andromedas are the father figure <coughs> of planet Earth. The Council of Andromeda looks after us, beside the Pleiades. Andromeda is important connection to planet Earth. They are the ones that see what is needed and they send to us whenever is needed. No, the saints, the gurus, the avatars, they send to us what is needed at that particular time. At this particular time, they decided to send the masculine energy and the feminine energy in the form of Jesus, Christ, Consciousness, and Mary Magdalene. They sent them to Earth to get rid of the trauma of the fall. The trauma of the fall we all have up to now. This is the end of Atlantis now. We all up to now have this trauma of this destruction of the fall. To re-anchor the cosmic energy, Poseidon, as far as came to download the cosmic energy. Because of the fall, this was severed, cut. So it needs to be re-anchored. And to raise the humanity to a different vibration for the next level of consciousness. So Christ came. We, you can say to save us, it's, it's not to save us, to basically to re-anchor those energies with Mary Magdalene to raise the human beings to heal. What they did 2,000 years ago, we are seeing the fruit of those energies now. What the hippies did in the 60s, we are seeing the fruit of that generation of the 60s. Christine was part of that. Now, so everything that happened, <laughs> see then, what is happening now, it's the fruit of all those energies. Christ and Mary Magdalene had incredible, <coughs> beautiful story. The story that we know about Christ and Mary Magdalene, again, it's not the story. It's not the true story. There is much more beautiful story underneath that story. But that was chosen to give us that story. We know better now, and we are starting to remember that this story is this beautiful story that Mary, Mary Magdalene came to Malta. She came after she had to leave Palestine and Alexandria. 
Joseph Arimathea had business, Heranke, Joseph Arimathea had business in Cornwall, and it is a long journey on these small boats that they used to have to, to go from Palestine to Cornwall. And he had a place where he could rest and to look at the seasons and be mortal. So when Mary Magdalene, with her first child, Sarah, uh, she was pregnant at the time and she came to Malta and she knew Malta as the island of goats and yellow flowers. And we, if you think about it, we have got four connection points on the island with Mary Magdalene. The chapel of Mary Magdalene at Dingley, the chapel of Mary Magdalene at Rabat uh, near the parish church. There is a, a, a grotto where possibly she stayed. There is Madalena, the chapel and the village of Madalena, and the church in Iam Valletta. St. Mary Magdalene. St. Mary Magdalene then eventually, by the 6th century, became a prostitute, a whore, and a penitent. But Mary Magdalene was a, a royal blood, and she was a good partner to Jesus Christ. Good. There, uh, there was also a gospel eh, of Mary Magdalene that they never included yes, in the Bible. Yeah. But it's published now. Is it? Yes. Sort of, uh, but is it uh, published officially from the church? Yes. Or is it just published? Yes, it is. But it's, is it officially acknowledged by the church? No, no. That I don't not. know, but no. that it is published, I know, because I saw it. You, you're talking the about of Mary Magdalene. You, uh, the, the Gospel of Thomas and all these things. You're talking about during that period when uh, there was openness, so there were a lot of Gospels, people that wrote their own Gospel, their own story. When it started, the, the church started to be dogmatic, to be controlled, center controlled, then you start to say, oh, you cannot say this, you cannot print this, you cannot do this. And they established that there are four Gospels. Uh, St. John had a problem to be accepted, but eventually St. John was accepted. And all the other books outside these four approved are apocrypha. They are not good. Fortunately, there were wise priests that they took some of these Gospels and buried them in the sand. <coughs> sand is the best protector. And fortunately, they found it. Um, they are not the official of the church, because the church only accepts four. And, but they are there. These are truths. And uh, about, um, about uh, the council that you mentioned before, um, is it also known as the Confederation of Planets or the Council of Saturn? Or is it, if is it different, the Council of Andromeda? There are, as I said, the Pantheon is the, the best image of the gods. There is a god for this universe and there are gods for other universes. And they've got a council and they meet and discuss. And each one will, uh, will do what it's like a sort of having a parliament. No. To to run this universe, this cosmic universe. Known as the Intergalactic Federation. Intergalactic, because it, between galactics, you know, intergalactic. No? The most, the place where the intergalactic beings, today, I'm talking, meet, is Tachanj. Tachanj is a center for interdimensional beings where they meet to discuss cosmic issues. But I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm asking you this question because I've heard of a lot of different names of councils, so I'm thinking maybe there's more than one council. Yes, of course. And then there is also what what is known as the Galactic Federation of Light. In the, in the second book, in the second chapter, I go through these things so to say, look, God is not so tough. There is the Father and the Spirit. Of God is there is one creator, then the creator have got a lot of gods to help him to run the universe, you know, with all the universes and worlds and cosmic and mm -hmm. galaxies. So every god had its own region, like a prime minister or whatever comes to It's a very deep hierarchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it makes sense now, because this is a huge universe, mm -hmm. you know. It makes sense. Okay. Okay. So Mary Magdalene and Jesus were good partners to download 
and re-anchor this. 